for tonight to be where I am. And I hope that you can see this more so as we move along. That there has been several themes that have been presented from the idea of starting off with um, what was the first song you sang, Charlie? Yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way. I want you to think about this tonight. Yes, Lord, yes. And so, Sister Rachel was talking about how that ministered to her in preparation of being ready for the coming of the Lord. And then we went into um, there's power in the blood and we're singing about the blood. And Sister Tina was testifying about that and claiming the blood. And this morning I was just doing that in our house, claiming the blood of Jesus, claiming victory over sickness, um, over that foul spirit that would want to come and afflict the bodies of those who are serving God and trying to live for God and exalt the kingdom of God. And then we went into singing, It is well with my soul. And so, you know, there's really various things that's happening as you see all of these songs being um, sung. Um, and then, you know, the Spirit of the Lord asking us to step out in faith and trust Him. And Brother David, the things that you were saying. So just so many different things that the Lord has already brought. And they seem very vast in their nature. In fact, if you were maybe looking through eyes of the flesh, they would seem like frayed ends of maybe yarn where, you know, there are just lots of things that are frayed but aren't come together. But I just feel like the Word of God is what brings all that together tonight. Amen. His Spirit is going to with the Word of God tonight as we look at the Word of God and what God says. And I think there's a challenge for each of us tonight um, how many of you in here, you find yourself at one point in your life that you have a role model? Maybe good, maybe bad, um, but potentially you finally got your eyes kind of centered and your life um, looking at someone who was a positive role model. And then you realize that as you developed in your life that you needed to leave a legacy behind as well. And you need to leave that, that footprint of being a role model as well to somebody. So it's kind of, you know, receiving, but yet also that of needing to give as well. And that idea of being a role model. And so uh, when I look, I find that there's one age-old role model in the, in the Word of God. Someone who's a great role model for, for us. And uh, he really became a role model for those in the New Testament even though he was ancient in the Old Testament. And his name is Job. And uh, when you look at Job and his life, just a phenomenal man, um, uh, you know, he declares of knowing that his Redeemer lives um, and that he's going to stand with him in the last day on the earth. But I like what James says in James chapter number 5, verse number 10. The Word of God says, Take my brother the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Amen. Here it is that even the Old Testament prophets, though they were high and they were in office, they were not exempt from affliction. Now, affliction is various in many ways, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit, but affliction can be you know, on many levels, many degrees, uh, different, but yet so alike. And the Bible goes on to say in James, verse number 11, Behold, we count them happy which endure. And that word endure, when we look at that word, it shows that it isn't just for a quick season, but there's certainly a length of time because they've had to endure that. Would you agree with me tonight when you look at that word, endure? Behold, we count them happy which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is, is very pitiful and of tender mercy. And here it is that, 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 that Job is proclaiming and those who are looking at the example of Job are proclaiming that, that God allows things in our life 
Because he brings them for good. Now, how can that be when it's not what we like or what we want? Amen. Then even that we don't understand it immediately. But can I simply say this? That when we do enter into those moments of whether light affliction or we endure affliction. Amen. Our idea should be, God, what is there in this for me to learn? What's the lesson to learn? What can I gain? And I believe that that's the example that Job showed to us as he showed us what a real role model is like. Once again, ancient Job, amen, even to those of the New Testament as they, they transcribe, they talk about the role model of that man, Job, and what he means to them. I want to look at five phrases. We've looked at these before. I'm not going to go over some things because you're very familiar with Job. I'm not speaking to those who are naive or unlearned of the man of God, Job. So I'm not going to go through all the details of his life and paint that scenario because you know. But in Job chapter number one, I love this. And it's amazing. Verse number 20 through verse number 22. The Bible says that Job arose and rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and he worshiped. And he said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Do you know the devil loved to stir up some trouble for Job? He still loves to stir the pot. He still loves to stir trouble. Uh, the enemy is very good at that. He's going to continue to do that. Amen. Until we're out of here. Amen. And in the presence of God. Amen. He's going to continue to do that. And so the Bible says in responding that Job fell to the ground, not in despair, but quite uh, the opposite, he fell to the ground in worship to God. And he said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked will I return hither. The Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away, and, but blessed be the name of the Lord. I love what uh, 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 1 Timothy 6, verse number 7 says, The Word of God says, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. How many are aware of that? You come in without a husband or a wife. You come in without clothing. You come in without any money. You come in without any relationship. Yes, I know that you were in your mother's womb and you felt her heartbeat. I understand all that. But 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 that was a relationship that grew. When you came, you had nothing. And when you leave, you're going to leave with nothing. You leave alone. Amen. And so here it is that Job said, uh, but blessed be the name of the Lord. So these are the things that we know. Here he is. He's in deep grief. We know that he's in financial distress or poverty. We know that he is in a health condition that is very bad. He's sick. And we know that he's in a broken relationship because of how his wife responds to him. So with all those things, we think about life situations and what they can hand to us. And Job was there, Brother David. He was experiencing it all. But he said, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, your will be done. Not my will, but thine be done. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. We have dreams and fantasies and lofty expectations that it's all going to be well, but not all of God's plans are well. He brings the good and he allows the evil as well. Yep. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. The Lord has allowed me to be sick. It wasn't a weekend that was very practical and convenient for me to be sick. Amen. It wasn't. Uh, there was disappointment for me for my girls. There was disappointment for me myself. Uh, but 
The Lord, what can I learn from this? The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. And so, in looking a little more at that, it's not only that Job responds, blessed be the name of the Lord, but he really tells us that we should accept the good and we should also accept that which is not so good. And so in Job chapter number 2, verse number 9 and 10, we read the Bible says, and then uh, said his wife unto him, uh, you, you, I'm going to use my own terminology here. Can I do that? Uh, you, 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 you maintain, you, you retain your own dignity. Why don't you curse God and die? And he said unto her, man, you speak like some foolish woman. What? Uh, shall I receive the good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive the evil? The Bible says, in all this, Job sinned not with his lips. Here he is, his health is, 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 has been attacked, and now he's being a, 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 a unleashed another attack from his wife. That she's attacking him. And so he simply asked her, wait, we can, we can accept the good, but we can't accept the bad that God allows in our life? That's an interesting question. You know, we live in this prosperity age where folks think that serving God is equivalent of prosperity. I understand that there are blessings from God. And I believe that God does want to increase us. Amen. But there are times in our lives where God is going to allow it to rain on us. Just because we're a Christian doesn't mean that we're exempt. Amen. But accepting what God has in this. Amen. And I believe that this is a sanctified response from Job. That he, he says, I'm going to accept whatever God gives to me. Amen. Uh, I, that, that, that serenity prayer that we hear. God grant me the serenity to accept those things that I cannot change. Amen. There are some things that we just need the grace of God to be able to endure in life and to go through in life because God wants to teach us lessons and make us strong in those ways. Amen. And Job said, wait a second. I, I'm going to praise God anyway. I'm going to praise God regardless if it's good or if it's bad or even if it's neutral. My life is about worshiping God. Amen. Worship. And then he goes, and this is one of my favorite passages. In Job 13, verse number 15, he goes on down to say this. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. Here he is. <clears throat> With his friends and and they're they're you know they're 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 here and and uh, suggesting that his problems are because of some unnamed or unconfessed sin and Job resisted the argument and uh, he he reaffirmed his faith in God that he can't explain his sufferings but he said this. He said, yeah, even though he slay me, yet I'm going to trust in him. Because he knew that, that really there was no real harm in the sense of whatever God chose to do to him, God was still going to take care of him. Yep. Amen. Are we that way in life that no matter what God allows, no matter what we go through, that we still have this complete confidence that God's still going to take care of me? God's going to take care of me. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. And then Job moves on to his fourth statement. And, and I just think that this is, is, is remarkable. Some folks have dubbed this, and I wish I would have been smart enough to think of this without ever having to read it. But, but, but I did. And this is from someone else. And so he's about to give us the Easter of the Old Testament. How awesome is that? And he says this in Job chapter 19 and, 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 and verse number, I'm just going to jump down to verse number 25 for the sake of my voice. He said, for I know that my Redeemer liveth and he shall stand with me at the latter day upon the earth. 
He goes on down to say, after, after you know, my skin is destroyed by worms, and after, uh, after uh, my, my, my body uh, 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 is destroyed, yet in my own flesh, I'm going to see God. Some may look and say, well, their body is destroyed. Uh, that foolish, crazy person, they died and look. But one day, amen, in this body, we are going to look and we're going to see God, that God is faithful, that we serve a resurrected Savior, and He's almighty and He's all-powerful, and He is the Redeemer. Amen. Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. And one day He's coming back, and at His second coming, we're going to see Him because He lives, we live. Yep. Amen. That's the confidence in the middle of life that we have. So when we're tired, when we're weary, when we're frustrated, when bad things happen, amen, the confidence of knowing, amen, one day I'm going to be with my Redeemer and that's all that really matters. The here and now will come and go, amen, but eternity will last forever and I'll be with my Redeemer. How awesome. How awesome tonight. And then he gives <coughs> this grand finale in Job 23. In verse number 10. He says, But he knows the way that I take, and when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as pure heart. He said that. He said, He knows the way that I take. Amen. Isn't that what the Spirit of God spoke to us tonight? That we can trust Him? Because He knows the way that we take. He knows the way that we take. You're not going somewhere haphazardly or without a compass or without direction. Just driven by the wind. But you're divinely directed to where you are at, right here, right now, tonight. He knows the way that you take. He knows the way that you take. He knows the way that you take. And you shall come forth as pure God. I just feel like that's the word tonight. Amen. He's our role model. Amen. He's our role model. Um, Excuse me, I've spit all this back and forth. I don't want to get my wife in the church. If you can throw a clean little thing. It's faith. Thank God gave me wisdom to do what's right, right? Do you believe that tonight? That God knows the way that you take. And even though you may not be exactly where you had projected or planned to be, where you are at is not by accident. God has led you here. Maybe I preach to myself some, but we are where God wants us. We are where God wants us. So we have to step out in faith and believe. And Mr. Holly, if you can come back tonight, <coughs> let's just sing a song, some song that brings us confidence in knowing our life is in God's hands. And let's worship tonight. I don't know what you've come to do. I know that there's a time of prayer and intercession, but. Um, Interceding, I'm sorry, I just made up my word. Um, but I just feel like tonight it's a time of worship. I'm not bringing you close because just stay where you are. You can worship right where you are in your own clean airspace. And you can allow God to believe on you with confidence that your life is in His hand. Would you stand tonight in this astrology? It's ready to, to do.